Alright, so here we are. This is good old Fadas from Ye Old Bar Oblivion Let's Play. For those few of you around who still remember it. We are in, uh, this is a couple of hours, um, two, three hours maybe, um, it's really difficult to say, into, I've rushed through a lot of it to be fair, probably haven't grinded as much as I should have, but um, this is about two or three hours into the game, and um, we're in a city called Davin's Watch apparently, we're in the Stone Falls region it's called. Um, for some reason they elected to call it Stone Falls region rather than Balfell, which I believe is what it was actually called in the lore, but never mind. Balfell being the Dunmeris for Stone Falls, so you know it's not an inaccurate name, but for some reason they decided to spell it in plain English. Um, but never mind. So anyway, as I said before, um, I said earlier that um, this is not an open world game, essentially, and that it's not. Um, Unfortunately, um, this is this is a city. This is you know Davin's Watch. This is the map for it. This is the area we are in. This is the extent of it. Um, as for the wider areas, though, well, this is the wider area we're in in Stonefalls. As you can see, look over here is Davin's Watch. All these other areas around here. Now these areas are, you know, in all fairness, they're quite big. As you can see, it's relatively large. This is a fairly sizable town. Um, and this region around here is fairly sizable as well. However, if you were basically going into this hoping, you know, as a lot of people I, I reckon probably were, hoping to be able to just be like, yes, I have all of Tamriel to explore. I'm going to go walk from Somerset Isle to the top of Red Mountain. Not going to happen, I'm afraid. Um, Red Mountain, Varnfeld, not even in here. This is the complete list of locations you can go to. That's the Alakid Desert, Aridon, wherever the heck that is. Balfoyan, already been there. Um, Mountain Cry, Bit, Bit Nick, Bleak Rock Isle. That was a very small tutorial kind of area. Um, Cold Harbor, which we've already been in. Cyrodiil. Yep, this is. Obviously, this is the PvP area. So if you're hoping to just run around exploring Cyrodiil for the fun of it, not going to happen. By the looks of things, I don't think. Um, so yeah, um, Dishan, East March. So yeah, like you've got Windhelm and all that sort of thing. So basically, what you've got here is you've got sliced off sections of Tamriel, which you can get to via portals to you know wherever. Like um, we go to where is it? Ban Balfoyan. There is a a gate here which you can go through, and then it warps you straight to Stonefalls, which is where we are now. So. Yeah, basically, you have a lot of big open areas, but it's not an open world game in the same sense that an Elder Scrolls game usually is. That may be a bit of a disappointment for some people. It was for me, certainly. Um, this obviously is beta. The game isn't released yet. Um, so obviously, lots of things are subject to change. That really goes without saying. Um, you know, that's kind of like, I haven't pointed that out yet because I basically assumed everyone was smart enough to realize that. So, um,. However, so I imagine they're going to be adding more regions to the game, obviously, but um, you will not get this seamless um, open world experience that Elder Scrolls games typically offer you. Um, which came as a bit of a surprise to me, to be fair, because that's pretty much what I was expecting, actually, from this game. I, th I thought, if nothing else, they're going to provide us with that big open world experience, but that's not what they've given us. Um, so, anyway, yeah. So, anyway, I've, this character's been in, in the game a few hours. Um, it's a Dark Elf Templar. Um, I decided to go with a Dark Elf because, well, you know, favourite race and all that sort of thing. Wanted to get my get a chance to see a bit of Morrowind as soon as possible. This is the province of Morrowind we're in right now, as you can probably tell from the giant mushrooms and whatnot. It looks vaguely like Morrowind. In fact, it, it, it's obviously channeling a lot of Mournhold here. Um, one of my main problems with this game is, and this was one of my main problems with it before it even went into beta, um, just from looking at screenshots and stuff like that, is that the art direction in this game is pretty underwhelming, um, even by Bethesda standards. In fact, generally speaking, Bethesda has pretty good art direction, you know, a few bits aside. Morrowind, I think, to this day, remains one of the best probably has some of the best art direction I've ever seen in a video game full stop. Um, the, the, the world design and all that sort of thing was just phenomenal. Um, 
And in this game, most of the good world design is only good, really, if I'm totally brutally honest, because it's been nicked from the previous Elder Scrolls games. And as you can see, see all this, this is pretty much just copy-pasted straight from, you know, Tribunal, uh, and, you know, given some nice textures and some remodeling and stuff like that, but that's really what it is. Um, even the bloody trees, even these blossom trees here, that's, you know, they had those in the bloody temple courtyard in Mournhall in, in the Tribunal expansion. It's all just pinched, you know, inch for inch, bit by bit. Even the trees look similar, and obviously, you know, that's a good and a bad thing. You know, you're damned if you, damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't on the developer's part, as far as that's concerned. Because in some ways, yeah, obviously, they, you've got to make it look like, you know, Morrowind, because otherwise people will complain. But at the same time, it just looks like they've done a terrific amount of work. You know, a lot of the brand new assets, which mostly comes down to things like the armor and weapons and that sort of thing are either so heavily inspired by you know previous games like you'll see a lot of Skyrim related stuff in here like obviously you can see the quest mark of the health bars and all that sort of stuff it's channeling Skyrim pretty heavily the weapons certainly the early ones is kind of well you know it bears a very striking resemblance to the old iron great sword in um, Skyrim but stuff like the armor uh, pretty well I mean look I'm, this is I an iron cuirass apparently um, it's nothing to write home about, is it, really? Um, the other thing is that, like, you know, they 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 have this they had this philosophy that going into it apparently that, you know, they would basically you know you you'd be allowed to wear any armor you picked up, you know, you know regardless of your class that kind of thing. Like you wouldn't in you know, a later Elder Scrolls game. Well, all of them, to be fair. Uh, barring Arena and Daggerfall, but the problem with this that the problem in this game is that um, while that is technically true, you just you really seem to find armor anywhere. Uh, this isn't like good old Morrowind where I could look to this. Even the, even the ordinators look a bit generic, and if he could stop moving, he's not going to, is he? Well, there we go. Um, like if you look at this guy, for example, he bears a, a resemblance to the ordinators from Morrowind, but. It's a pretty uninspiring redesign, if I'm totally frank, you know. I mean, one of the things I loved about Morrowind's armor, for example, a lot of it was that it was so much thought went into it. If you looked at the Ordinator armor in Morrowind, for example, um, you could see that careful attention was paid to, like, how it looked, what material it was made of. It was made of this burnished chitin, I think, you know, insect shells, basically. The shield had a big emblem of Alm Stevie on it, you know, a big triangle. In fact, there were triangle motifs all over the damn thing. Um... And the mask was quite deliberately, you know, modelled off the death mask of Nerevar Indoril. This is just a generic mask, which doesn't look anything like the death mask of Nerevar Indoril. In fact, the whole armor just looks very generic. All the armor in this game looks really, really similar. It's it's kind of weird. They have they all seem to have this triangle pauldrons thing going on. Um, it's strange. So you know, basically, a lot of the a lot of the the design, a lot of the art direction in this game, really not that great. I'm seriously un unimpressed with it. And that's something I was worried was going to be the case when I saw the original screenshots for it. I mean, one of the strong suits of the Elder Scrolls games has been that they've always, almost always at least, had really strong art direction. Everything looked really, really nice. From the lowest piece of leather armor to the most expensive armor you could find in the game. It all looked really damn good. Um, but in this game it really doesn't again, this gentleman here wearing whatever armor that is. It all looks remarkably similar, if you know what I mean. So, anyway, enough gabbing about that. If obviously you've got merchants and things like this, most of this is um, crafting people, you know, like you, people you buy crafting supplies off, and you do crafting in the traditional MMO sense. However, there are some merchants where you can buy, just straight up buy armor or weapons from. Um, but as I was saying earlier, the problem with the old armor and weapons situation in this game is that, yeah, you can equip anything you find, but you never find any armor. You get some as quest rewards, and you can buy some armor or weapons, but they are absurdly expensive. They are, in fact, they're ridiculously expensive. I, um, for a solid, like, two hours of play, all I had to show for myself was enough money to buy this iron cuirass I am wearing right now. Um... I kid you not, it's it's insanely expensive, and, you know, consider it, the, these open world areas, as I said, they are quite large, and they can actually be a bit of a chore to get around, um, and so obviously you're thinking, right, well, maybe it'd be a good idea to get a horse or something, and before I go any further, I would like to point out that, 
is that a max? Guys, come on. The Dunma, they don't have horses in Morrowind. They don't, they just, they, they don't exist in Morrowind. They, they, keep, they have horses, alright, but they eat them. They, they, they keep them as almost like cattle. They don't ride horses in Morrowind. The Dark Elves just don't do it, so... What's this about, eh? Come on. At least let me ride a guar or something. Never mind, anyway. So, obviously... We raise fine horses in Davil's Watch. You can buy horses for a ridiculous amount of money. Um, obviously, I think if you pre-order the game, you'll get a horse for free. But um, as you can see, a common horse trap, like, not much choice here. And again, look, they're all insanely expensive. Like, this this is the cheapest, and it's still 17,000 gold. I have 346 gold, and that took a lot of time to collect. It really did. Like, my last quest reward was probably something like 50 gold. Um... I kid you not. Most enemies, even at this stage, you know, much later on outside of the tutorial, still only ever drop, like, one gold. Um, so there is a lot of, you know, grinding, I think, involved if you really want to buy the more expensive stuff. The armor weapons are slightly less ridiculous in their prices, but they are still very, very expensive, even for the most basic iron armor. Um, you want to buy steel? Um, yeah, good luck. At this low level. Um, I am currently... I believe I'm level 5 or 6. Yeah, I'm level 5. If, at level 5 in a, any of the other Elder Scrolls games, I would probably have some fairly decent armor and wet armor and weapons by now. I would have some steel armor at least if I was going with a heavy armored character. Um, currently, I don't. I have this iron cuirass and that's kind of it, basically. Um, it's an elite! So, they've stayed relatively faithful to... Ooh, stunned me there a bit. They stayed relatively faithful to a lot of the original creatures and stuff. Um, obviously with a bit of redesigning here and there. You know, that's good. It's good stuff. I'm glad they didn't just make shit up for the sake of it. Um, Wormwood. So, uh, probably an alchemy thing. I've not been doing any alchemy, but I could probably sell it for like a gold coin or something. Joran the Skull King. Oh yes, for those wondering, there are books in this game. There are books. Um, they're few and far between, but they are here. Um, most of them so far seem to be copy pasted. You can't pick them up and take them with you. Although it probably gets added to maybe some sort of journal entry thing. I'm not sure. Law library. Ah, right, you pretty much, like, you've got a list of all the books here, and... Get biographies, yeah, John the Skull King. We can read it, so... Okay, right, it does store the books for you, kind of. But it's more like your Dragon Age kind of codex entries type of affair, really. Um, they're not physical items that you can pick up and sell, or collect and put in a player home with a library or anything. As for stuff like player homes, I really have no idea. Not got far enough into the game. I'm going to assume that there on there's no such thing. Um, it wouldn't make sense in an MMO certainly, unless maybe you get some sort of you know pocket dimension type thing that you can go to and put stuff in, I guess. But a physical actual house in the world that you can own, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so yeah, you can see other players moving around here. Uh, it's relatively well populated actually. They've clearly got a lot of people on this 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 stretch of the beta. Um, but that brings me to another problem I have with this game in that um, I really begin to wonder sometimes what exactly the point is having all these other players around here. I mean, don't you? Yeah, okay, don't be silly, Dave. It's an MMO. What do you mean? What, what on earth are you talking about? Well, what I mean is they don't really having other people around here really doesn't seem to add to the experience very much. I mean, obviously having someone in a party with you going around and you know just doing whatever probably is kind of fun. But um, I'm not doing that. And I'm sure plenty of people, plenty of other people aren't doing that either. And even if you were, like, I just sort of don't see what the point is. Just, this game would almost be more enjoyable if you could somehow just make all the other players invisible. Um, because they're not adding anything to the experience. I mean, if we look at this from an MMO standpoint, obviously I'm looking at this from primarily from the single player Elder Scrolls nerd standpoint, really, uh, who obviously... Did, I mean, for, for many people, myself included, the Elder Scrolls games are a very solitary experience, and that's kind of what draws me to them. Also, rubbish draw distance, by the way. I think maybe the weather is supposed to be foggy right now, but yeah, draw distance, not great. 
Um, again, like I said, it's not an open world. You're not going to see big mountains in the background and be like, yes, I'm going to go climb that damn thing. Um, like you would be able to in any, any other Elder Scrolls game. It just you know, it doesn't happen in this. It's, well... But, you know, anyway, to look at this from a MMO standpoint, again, there, there doesn't seem much real point in having all the other players rolling around. To kind of give you an example to show you what I'm talking about, in something like Guild Wars 2, for example, you had lots of sort of um, events in each area, sort of like that you could take part in, which usually was stuff like impromptu uh, boss battles or big PvE battles where, you know, anyone who happened to be passing by could just jump in, join in, and get some experience as a result of it. Perhaps you'd have you'd have something like you know an ancient lich lord summoning himself across an ice lake or something, and then anyone who happened to be passing by, a thing would pop up at the top of your screen saying that it was beginning. Anyone who happened to be in the region could run over and take part, and you'd have a great big fantastic sort of battle with like dozens of guys running around you, all attacking the monsters and stuff like that. And it was balanced in a way specifically so that the monsters were nice and powerful, so that you needed lots of people to take them down. So you were you you were basically forced by circumstance to cooperate with the other players and you know have generally have a good time as a result. But in this game, there's nothing like that, and um, there's really no benefit to having other people running around with you. You can have obviously someone in your party helping you kill things, but to be honest with you, it's easy enough as it is. You don't need someone else with you helping you kill things. Obviously, there's no difficulty slider because this is a bloody MMO. So the combat is really really not challenging at all. It's it's and it's not very engaging either. I mean. Superficially, as you can probably tell from what we've seen already, like it's quite similar to, say, Skyrim or something. But the uh, notes noticeable, obviously, obvious changes of oh look, I can clip through the enemies. You know, this is an MMO. You kind of need to be able to clip through the enemies for the big area battles, but and that's fine because you need yeah okay, that's how an MMO works. But the problem with that is other MMOs don't do this whole first person thing. And being able to clip through enemies in first person is incredibly jarring, and it just makes the it, it just makes the combat feel very sort of floaty. I guess you could say. What is what is what is that? Never mind. Very floaty. There's no sense of impact whatsoever at all. There's just nothing. Um, hello. Would you like to acknowledge the fact that I'm here? I, I think I'm getting a bit of lag here. That's probably what's going on. To be fair, let's see if I can use some of my ranged abilities. Yeah, I'm getting some lag. Probably something to do with my connection, if I'm honest with you, because I'm staying over in Kettering at the minute. My connection's pretty rubbish, but anyway, yeah. Oh, you are an enemy, apparently. Or or not. You're just a very confused player. Um, so anyway, yeah. Getting back to my point. There seems to be very little point in having these other players around with you. I mean, there's probably one instance in the entire game where I actually felt like having other players benefited me somehow, and that was when I was doing part of the main quest in which I was defending a fort from being attacked by a bunch of um, Covenant people, you know, Daggerfall Covenant, whatever it's called. A um, bunch of Bretons, basically. Attack the fort, and you have to help defend it, and, for, you know, 90% my, my of it I was fine just by myself. There were some other... Um, played in the area though, and there was one point where I think there were about four or five enemies that were mobbing me all at once because I'd managed to aggro them. Um, and a couple of other players turned up, and we killed the enemies together, and that actually worked out quite well. Um, but that is literally the only time in this in this entire experience where I've actually been grateful, or there has actually been any sort of foreseeable point in in having. You know, other other players around in the game with you. You know, so that's a problem. It really is for for an online game. That's a problem um, because, like I said, I've played I've played Guild Wars two. You know, I've I've seen how a good MMO is put together. I'm a big fan of Guild Wars two, even though I'm not normally a fan of MMOs, um, just because it took the whole idea of being online with other people and, you know, ran with it, basically. And said, right, we'll take it to its logical conclusion and we'll make there actually be a point to having lots of people running around with you. 
this is getting incredibly awkward on account of the fact that the game is lagging lots. And yeah, I'm dead now. Brilliant. Lag's a problem. Um, in case you're thinking this is an isolated incident, no, the la lag is a big problem. Um, the, the, particularly because of the way the combat works in this game. There is a reason why combat in other... Let's go to the nearest white shrine, why the heck not? Um, obviously no permadeath. Um, goes without saying. Um, there is, and I've completely lost my train of thought now, but yeah, yeah, no, anyway, lag, yeah, it's a problem. Um, there is a reason why other MMOs have done the whole hot bar auto attacking kind of system. That's because complicated attacks, I've, I've clearly wandered into a high level area here, which I probably shouldn't be in. It's only now that the combat's actually getting bloody challenging. Uh, <laughs> as for assault of that, which is kind of bad, I guess, but never mind. Um, but um, doing all this this kind of quite complex combat you know I'd say complex you know, from a gameplay perspective it's really bloody not but from a mechanical perspective yeah it's kind of complex you're, you, you're individually making each attack with the click of your mouse you, you know you're dodging you're blocking you're doing all that kind of stuff um, that's kind of difficult to actually con you know, communicate with a server and back to you and then to all the other people on the server and all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is really is not the first time that that's happened to me. And this is the, my connection's not great at the minute. I'm, it's a regular broadband connection. I'm on it at the minute. Normally I'd be using fiber optic, but I'm away from home at the minute. This connection is not amazing, but it's more than enough to play something like Guild Wars 2. Um, it's more than enough to play any other online game like War Thunder or, you know, World of Tanks or whatever, you know. So that's an issue. Um, I don't know how they're going to solve that. Honestly, I really kind of look. God, lagging all over the place. It's kind of terrible. Um, I don't know how they're going to solve that. I really have no idea. I don't even know where I'm going at the minute. I think I'm heading back to the town. Yeah. I suppose I might as well go to what, go towards one of these quest markers. These these black glowy ones. These are side quests. Uh, I have quickly given up on doing side quests on account of the fact that they're all deathly dull. Uh, they all seem to be the same thing. Go find all four of my guars and tell them to come back. Go find all four of my friend Argonian friends and tell them to come back. Etc. Etc. Um, it's really dull as dishwater. That's my, I think, probably my overriding problem with this entire game. Everything really boils down to one point. The, the combat being bland, the world design being pretty bland, the character design being bland, the, the quests being boring. The whole game is just really dull. It really is. Like, I was, I was playing this yesterday for a number of hours because... I, and, I, and it got to a point where I literally was just forcing myself through the game. I was. I was forcing myself to play it. Meet Holgan. Wait, what? Like, I can't even, like, it's Legacy of the Ancestors at the top right there. Meet Holgan. I can't remember why I'm supposed to be meeting Holgan. I can't remember who the friggin' hell Holgan is. And that should probably tell you just how much of an impact this game has made on me. Um, granted, some of the side quests and, you know, some of that Skyrim are not particularly interesting, but generally speaking, I, can, I managed to remember the finer details of them. But in this game, I can't remember a bloody thing. This is a main quest thing as well, I think. Um, quests. Stonefall's Legacy of the Elders. A Nord commander named Holgan asked me to help defend Davin's Watch. Oh, yeah, apparently the city's going to be under attack. I, from the Covenant people. That seems to be all the main quests is boiled down to at this point. It hasn't made much sense, if I'm perfectly honest with you. You, you know, spoilers, obviously, but you escape, you know, um, Cold Harbor with that Prophet fella's help, and you both get sent to dis different areas of Tamriel. Um, and at that point he he basically says go go talk to this commander woman who's downstairs in the house you're at god this lag is intolerable um, go downstairs meet them at the meet, meet, meet this commander woman who's at the house you're at you start this little village I, I imagine it's slightly different depending on which alliance you pick but I picked pact basically so that's where I am I got to this place uh, let's have a look it was Bleak Rock Isle. This apparently this this island, which is off the north coast of Skyrim, which you know, which somehow didn't actually make it into Skyrim, the game. Gotta wonder why that happened, eh? 
Tut tut. Anyway, so you, you start off in this place, which is a little sort of island, tutorial island, and obviously it's an enclosed area. You can't get out of it unless you progress the main quest. I did try going off to the edge and then swimming. <laughs> I, actually, I think I went to the southern end of the island, and I started trying to swim south to see if I could find Skyrim, and if you do that, then, well, when you, basically when you're swimming, you can't attack anything. And eventually you get far enough out, then you start getting chomped on by slaughterfish that I couldn't actually see, by the way. It was just a... my health was going down. Then I died, and I got an achievement, apparently, for being killed by a slaughterfish. So, yeah. Um... That, that, that's, that's how that works. So, anyway, uh, let's, let's try and continue with this quest um, that wants us to go... Try to find the damn quest marker in a minute. Over here, I guess. I'm a bit confused about how that's working. As for the general bugginess of the game, it's not really something worth commenting on because... Um, Oh, let's do this, this side quest here. Might as well. Honor to you, traveler. Name's Naril. I'm guessing you're new in town and need some work. It's a bit of luck we met because I need some help in a business deal. Do you have in mind? You may have heard Stonefalls is under attack. This makes some things very lucrative. Take wine. If I had a particular bottle, there's a party who'd pay well for it. Ask me to steal some wine. Please procure. There's a bottle of Tears of Amaya hoarded by a Nord Tavern Keeper here. I offered to buy, but he won't sell. Frankly, he'll never drink it, so he'd never know if it was replaced by a copy. Fine, I'll I accept it. It's a fish stink down yep, by the yep, docks. Yep. A brute named Hector runs it. He's unreasonable about his precious bottle. You can't just smooth talk it away from him. With cleverness, swap that bottle out when he's not looking. He probably can't tell the difference between good wine and sweet. I knew you were game. Right. Okay, well, there we go. A quest. Um, I wonder exactly where. Oh, right. Okay, right. That was. This is the main story on the Harborage. Seek out a place called the Harborage where he's taking refuge. Okay, we have to go meet the Prophet. Uh, basically. I wonder if that's marked on our map. Find the harborage. So I uh, okay. So I have to wander around looking for this place. Then all right, fair enough. Um, that's that's all I can get from this. Oh, by the way, yeah. In case in case you're wondering as well, this is something I failed to touch on before. This game does have a stealth system. Um, it works like this. Kind of as you'd expect. Um, you've got the little eye logo, like you do in the regular games. Lots of input lag as well at the minute. It's kind of bad. Um, so, the, 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 the thing is, stealth in this game seems kind of pointless. Like, very pointless. Because you can't steal stuff, as far as I'm aware. Um, you can't steal stuff at all. Uh, you, because you got. I mean, you obviously you can't kill NPCs. So I shall demonstrate right now. Yep, you can't attack him at all, and you can't steal stuff from them because you can't pick up random objects. Like you see all this stuff here, like the bottles, the bread, the, the bed rolls, all that kind of stuff. But look at the widow gua. He's adorable. Um, you can't pick any of the stuff up, so you can't nick anything off NPCs. So. If you were hoping to go around being a master thief, pilfering things, yep, no, that's not going to happen, sorry. Um, as for sneaking up on enemies, well, you can do that, but it seems equally pointless. Um, the enemies in this game haven't really had an apt opportunity to demonstrate that. Um, but they, they go by the standard MMO kind of... They, they stand there completely inert until you come close enough to them, by which point they become aggroed and then they run towards you. But the, 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 the distance by which they can actually get aggroed is really small. Um, there's really kind of this strangely farcical air part of the main quest, which I did earlier, where it was back on that island I told you about. Bleak Rock Isle, where the village comes under attack, and um, you're running around and you're trying to rescue some villagers. Um, rescue three villagers and return to 
X and PC, um, basically. And you're running around, and there is there are there are enemy NPCs running around doing their thing, setting fire to the houses and that sort of stuff. But they just completely ignore you. They just completely ignore you unless you get within about five feet of the bloody things, and then they attack you. And it's completely ridiculous because you're supposed to be running around defending this village, and then all the enemy soldiers are just sort of ignoring you until you get close enough. And it honestly, it's just bizarre. I mean, it's standard MMO stuff at the end of the day, but like I said, when you come into this from an Elder Scrolls background, and bearing in mind, as again, you know, that this is a target audience for the people making this game, it just seems very strange. It just, it, it's, it, it's incredibly jarring. Um, and again, coming back to the. The, the 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 parts with like how the other players in, interact with the game, you know, they're not adding having other people around here in in, in this online environment it really isn't adding much to the game, and um, all that you really seem to do is subtract from it. Honestly, um, I tried when I when I finally got out of Cold Harbor and I got to Bleak Rock Isle, I tried actually my best. I just wandered off, decided to screw these quests. I'm just going to wander off and explore a bit. And do, do as I would in an ordinary Elder Scrolls game, really. Just wander off, have a bit of an explore, see what there is to see. And, you know, I'm running along. And uh, I've come to... I come to this crossroads, and there's this injured NPC who is apparently been hunting some monster called Deathclaw. Uh, it's some, some sort of bat-like creature. Um... And he's been injured by it, and he wants you to go kill it for him. So you wander off, and you go down to this cave. Um, you know, sort of spooky abandoned cave, where the you know remnants of former victims to the monster are lying around, bones and such like that. And the monster's in the cave. Um, however, the entire moment is kind of ruined by the fact that you have... Two cloned bodies of the monster lying on the ground next to you at the time and two other players already going at the monster which is in the cave at the time because they're all doing the same quest as you and of course then the monster dies and then I actually had to stand around waiting for it to respawn and there were others with me as well who were doing the same so eventually, essentially what you had is this ridiculous scenario where people were basically queuing up literally queuing to kill this monster and you know finish the quest uh, there was a bit later on as well with that there was a, a barrow basically, and Bleak Rock Isle, uh, it was this over here, there's a barrow, and, you know, you, you go to the barrow, it's this ancient barrow that has lain undisturbed for centuries, you have to summon a ghost of the dragon priest to the barrow to be able to find out how to get in there, because apparently there's a covenant necromancer in there who is desecrating the place. And of course you're going to this, you're going to this abandoned quote-unquote barrow, and obviously there's like 20 players running around all around the outside. Um, just running around attacking the, the the various skeleton monsters that are there, and um, you know you 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 <laughs> you're doing this, and then you get inside the barrow, and there's about five people in the main chamber, all just standing around, waiting for the necromancer who is lying on the slab for some reason asleep. Um, to respawn again because again there's like two corpses of him on the ground cloned ones from previous people who have come and killed him everyone's sort of standing around waiting for the guy to respawn he respawns and instantly all five people jump into action all just wailing away on this necromancer um, there's a treasure chest in the room but it's empty because people have already been there and looted it before we'd got there because um, loot is um you know, it's not like it isn't, say, something like Guild Wars 2, whereby like you get to a loot chest and everyone can access the loot chest and they get their own loot from it. In this game, you know, you go to, say, these crates. If I search these crates, and I think the game is lagging so much right now, it won't actually let me loot the crates, which is actually amazing. Um, they're also getting sort of strange battle sounds around here, and although there's, there's clearly no battle going on at all. Oh dear, this game's a mess. But hey, beta is beta. Oh, I can't hold that against them, certainly. Um, 
you know, it's just it feels really weird. You you just you, you can't get immersed in it the same way you can a regular Elder Scrolls game. You know, that much is pretty damn clear. You can't because at every single turn something occurs, like the examples I listed already, like this nonsense here. Something turns up and just completely ruins your immersion entirely. It's just bang gone. Um, God, I feel like I'm in the damn Twilight Zone right now. This is just strange. Um, I'm, I, you know what, guys? I'm going to log out and log back in and see if there's any improvement at all. So, uh, yeah, bear with me. All right, I've logged back in. Um, there's still plenty of lag going on, as you can see. Again, I have no idea why. Um, there's nothing wrong with my connection. So, you know, what can you do? But at least there's actually stuff around. Get some combat going on. Yeah, there we go. Lag be damned. Let's kill this guy. Combat's very sluggish as well. I mean, when lag's not giving you input lag anyway, the the the, the kind of input you get from your character swinging your weapon and stuff like that, it just still feels slightly delayed. Yep, there we go. One gold. Fantastic loot drops. All that armor is wearing. Nope, doesn't exist apparently. Don't get a chance to wear that. Not available to us. Just trying to use some of our magical abilities on him. Enjoy! There we go. So, some of the magical abilities and stuff are nice, I have to admit. I like the fact that you just press a button and you cast it. Um, that's cool. That's I like that, actually. I think that's good. Um, credit where credit is due. That's, wow, that's a really dodgy gra graphical effect, isn't it? Good grief. Um, you know, credit where credit's due, that works quite well. I was never a fan of the way that in Skyrim you had to equip spells like they were weapons. Um, I always thought that was a bit stupid. Um, well, not stupid, just very unintuitive and a bit of a step back, frankly. Um, so I like the way the spells and stuff work in this, where you just press a button and then off you go. You've got your little hot bar here. Not a bad system, actually. Pretty good. Like that. I do. I mean, the, the actual physical mechanics of the combat leave a lot to be desired, frankly, but that I can get behind. I would not be sad at all if that made it into the next Elder Scrolls single player game, actually, this kind of hot wire based system. Would be pretty sweet. Um, I'll leave her entering some sort of town area here. Yeah, this is Dalmor yeah. look around there's really not much to see though it's a handful of buildings I believe you can go into them um, they'll be called so-and-so's house and you can you can just wander into them and so on and so forth um, there we go let's pop into this random person's house as, as you generally tend to do in these games I'll look around yep this is all very cool is there anything in here we can interact with anything at all there's a pet gua. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, there's something here. A barrel. Aha, a barrel. Containing my goat meat. I am the great goat meat thief of Dalmora. The great goat meat thief of legend. Um, goodness me. And even if the NPC was in that, that wouldn't have counted as stealing either. There seems to be no distinction at all in this game. I have not once in all the time I've been coming playing this, you know, I've not once come across a item which said, you know, it was highlighted in red like you'd expect in Skyrim or something that would have been stealing to take. Um, that does not occur. Um, there's basically no such thing as stealing in the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, amazingly enough. So, yeah. Hello, Batus. You are the sun on my scales. I will think of you every day at evening meditation. Uh, good for you. Did I do a quest for him or something? I really don't remember. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Yeah, as I think I made earlier, I, I think I said earlier, the main quest seems to make very little sense at all. Like I said, you get out of this, you get out of Cold Harbor, 
the, the prophet gets teleported to um, Draven's watch or something. I'm rather busy right now. Good for you, mate. Um, you get, you get, he gets transported to you know Draven's watch or whatever. Oops, and antagonize the bull netch. I, I see. Good luck. Um, yeah, you get there, and then you, you you basically talk to this woman who's in charge of the village you're in, and then you do a bunch of quests for her for some reason. You know, if you're not you're, you're playing a character that you didn't envisage doing that sort of thing, kind of like I originally wanted to do with this one. Yeah, good luck. No, that's not gonna happen. You can you can obviously click goodbye on the dialogue, but then you're stuck because you can't progress the main quest. Um, so, you know. Then you, then you go off and do a bunch of these quests, and then for some reason you find yourself chaperoning these refugees out of the town. You come to this place here, then you do a bunch of quests to help these refugees, and the whole time I'm sitting here wondering, why am I doing this exactly? Um, shouldn't I be going to find this prophet fella? This seems vaguely important, somehow. Uh, he hasn't really explained why. Uh, apparently you're special for some reason, the prophet seems to think you're special, and he doesn't really explain why or anything like that. Um, but you're doing all these bloody quests for these refugees and stuff, and helping the Pact fight off the Covenant who are trying to invade this corner of the world, apparently, for, you know, for some reason. Um, you know, and, um, there she is, yeah, the, the Captain Rana over here. Um, because you arrive here by boat, you see, from this island. Um, and, uh, yeah, it... <sighs> And after a while, you know, I just ended up just completely switching off. I wasn't paying attention to the quests at all. I was just running from quest marker to quest marker in the interest of progress. Because honestly, I, I, and you know, a couple of friends had a similar opinion to me. You know, they just got to the point where they said all they really wanted to do was log off and then not log back in again. They really didn't see why they would, what was there to keep them playing. And honestly, the only reason I've come as far as I have is because I felt I, I had to just for the sake of getting a better you know fuller you know more full of first impressions with which to do this video with um, but you know the, the three or four hours I actually played of it was about all that I could actually stomach uh, eventually I just quit and uh, went and watched a film <laughs> for the rest of the evening because I had had more than enough uh, I, I was sat there with the people who were actually sat in the room with me playing at the time, and I was just sitting there saying, this game is so boring, guys. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know. It was just a bit of a pain in the ass. Let's jump off this bridge. Will the game let us do that? It will. Marvelous. Swimming, yes. Swimming works as, as you can see. You can't go underwater, I believe. You can just swim along the surface like this. Um, let's go see if there's anything interesting over here. Um, behind this waterfall. This is supposedly an Elder Scrolls game, so one would expect to find something behind the waterfall, but let's just say I don't have high hopes. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. Um, I mean, to its credit, a lot of the areas like this, they're quite open. Like, it is closed off areas. But those areas are quite open. You can just jump around and monkey around like I'm doing right now, just to your heart's content. But the real problem is that... Well, there's kind of nothing to see. The the kind of... The overworld, if you like, it's, it's, is really kind of blank. There's really not a lot there other than just standard mobs. You don't tend to come across anything particularly interesting to discover. There are no... I mean, to my to my knowledge, as far as I can tell, there are no random dungeons. Like, if you're expecting to be able to run around, run around like you do in say Skyrim, find an old and abandoned barrow, just charge in there, kill a bunch of enemies, get some loot, and come back out again, just because you wanted to, um, that's not going to happen. The only dungeons I found in this game were ones that were part of a quest. Um, there don't appear to any, be any random dungeons lying around for you to explore, and you know the exteriors are pretty featureless uh, honestly there's not a lot to see um, you know one of the things about the Elder Scrolls games is that they're, they're big open worlds 
But most of the time, I mean, probably Oblivion, I guess, would probably be the main exception because a lot of Oblivion was randomly generated, actually. Well, not randomly generated, but it was procedurally, you know, computer generated the terrain in the game was, actually, like all the forests and stuff like that to save time. And as a result, it, a lot of it became pretty bleak and featureless, but, you know, at least it had a few ruins and forts lying around for you to explore and that sort of thing. Oh, no, you don't. Well, yes. Energy Javelin of Doom, come here. Let's finish you off. Damn this lag, there we go. And, oh look, one gold coin! Such a lottery it is when you when you loot these enemies. You never know what you're gonna get, do you? Um, let me have a go at you as well. Ah, damn you. More things to kill? See... Again, this is just sort of, again, we're getting into sort of immersion breaking territory because I already did the quest that... You know, saw these guys off and defeated them and drove them away from the farms they were setting fire to. Um, but, you know, yet again, here they are! Like, um... Okay, um, it, again, to take the example of the, the barrow with the necromancer in it, I killed the necromancer, you know, for the quest. Killed him, found a note he'd, again, not, just killed you, dude, come on. Um, killed the ne necromancer, found, like, the note, the letter he had behind, you know, as part of the quest, you know, read that sort of thing. Turned around away from the table which the note, the note had on it, and the necromancer had immediately respawned behind me. And I'm just like, I just killed you, dude. No. They didn't even put in the effort to just sort of make the necromancer disappear permanently for people who had already killed him. No, he respawns again, even if you have just killed him. Um, you know, for the other players to come along and kill. And, you know, I just, all, all of that kind of crap, it seems to contribute to this sort of growing feeling I have that this game isn't really an Elder Scrolls game, so much as it is this kind of weird... I don't even know what is going on right now. Um, uh, anyway, um, the game seems sort of feels like this weird Elder Scrolls themed amusement park, where you kind of everyone runs around like you know you go to this ancient barrow, except like there's twenty other people you know, like tourists running around and having a look at everything and just sort of killing monsters and things, and it's just. The game, the game doesn't feel like an Elder Scrolls game. It fe feels like a, an Elder Scrolls themed game. Like, um, like they've taken a very, very basic, ordinary MMO and then they've put this this Elder Scrolls uh, kind of aesthetic on it. Like all the buildings and the raises and stuff are Elder Scrolls ones, but it, it seems to bear very little resemblance to an Elder Scrolls game ultimately, other than the very superficial stuff like the UI and that kind of thing. Oh, that's begging to be jumped into. Oh, it's ankle deep. How disappointing. But look, you can see that like, there's nothing here to see. All it is is just rivers and hills and randomly spawned mobs. There's nothing interesting to explore. You know, e exploration is the thing that makes Elder Scrolls games fun. You know, I think Skyrim is a perfect example of that because Skyrim had some really rubbish quests in it. Let's be honest. Main quest wasn't that great. The guild quests aren't amazing, um, but the, the world you had to explore was fantastic. You could spend countless, countless hours just wandering around, exploring this strange new land, and just having all sorts of great emergent adventures there. It just isn't the case here. There's nothing to see. There just is nothing to see. You can go you can you oogle some of the, the, the landmarks, like this tower here and some of these giant mushrooms, but that's about it, really. It, uh, you know, Morrowind had more interesting terrain than this, and that's impressive considering how old that game is by now. The world design really is pretty disappointing in this. And, you know, on top of that, I'm in Morrowind and I haven't seen a single cliff racer. I'm very disappointed about that. <laughs> There's these bird things flying around, but no, um, 
No cliff races. Never mind. Just disappointing. That's what it is. It's boring and it's disappointing. If I had to sum up this game in two words, that would be it, really. Um, there's just nothing to see. Really nothing to see. I mean, I don't care, Zenimax, how much you try to cover it up by appealing to my nostalgia with all these nice Mournhold-esque buildings and all these weird squiggly trees and the giant mushrooms and all that kind of stuff and the guars. You know, you're trying to, you're clearly trying to push all my nostalgia buttons here, and I imagine it's probably the same if you go to somewhere like, if you go to the Skyrim areas or you go to Cyrodiil, you'll see all the little alien ruins around and stuff like that. But it just doesn't cut it. It's not interesting enough. There's just nothing to see. It's dull as dishwater, the whole damn thing. And uh, I'm probably not going to be carrying on with this, honestly. They, I think the beta weekend's almost over anyway, so that's kind of a moot point. But I don't think I'm going to be buying this. In fact, I'm definitely almost sure I'm not going to be buying this on release. You know, I... Um... Oh, look, a chest. Oh, it's a locked chest. This is literally the first one I've encountered in the entire game, the whole time I've been playing. Um... Don't even remember how this works. I believe there was a brief tutorial explaining the way it... Right, I, I see. Yeah, you wait till it's... Yeah, you wait till it wiggles a bit and then you... Oh, now it gives me the tutorial after I've done it. Oh dear, never mind. 13 gold, my, quite the treasure trove. I'm surprised nobody else has found that. Really am, um, because that chest will respawn, like it's disappeared now, but it will respawn in a few minutes. Um... I really, I'm running out of things to talk about here, honestly. I think I've probably touched on just about everything worth touching on. Like I said, I would, I'm would. i not going to be pre-ordering this. Um, I'm really not. Obviously, this is still beta. They're going to add more stuff in the future. There's going to be expansions, I imagine. But um, I think underneath it all, the, the core things that really I'm disappointed by, like the world design and all that kind of stuff, I just... I... I don't think they're going to be able to fix with updates. I really don't. Um, you know, and this is this is a this is just sort of. I mean, I don't think I don't think I'd even get this even if there wasn't a subscription fee. I think the fact that there's a subscription fee really just you know puts the nail in the coffin for me. I. I mean, I'm prepared to do subscription fees. I play. I play online competitive games like you know, War Thunder or you know World of Tanks or whatever. Mostly War Thunder though, and you know while while that's a free to play game that doesn't require a subscription fee, I usually pay every month to keep my premium membership going because I, I feel it's worth it personally. Um, so in effect, I kind of pay a subscription fee for all that for, for that already, and I'm fine with that because the, I I feel that the game that I'm provided with is totally worth it. Um, I feel it's an exceptionally good game. But this case though. I feel that this game to me barely is worth the, the the forty quid asking price of the game itself in the box, let alone fifteen pounds for ten pounds every month. Good grief, I wouldn't pay ten pounds every month for this. No, no no way. Not even if I had like four friends to play it with. Um I really wouldn't, I'd much sooner go back to Guild Wars 2. In fact I might, if you know playing this has put me in that kind of mood again. Um I, I really am tempted to just go back and play that for a bit, you know. Guild Wars 2 was in, it was interesting because that was a that that wore its you know its genre on its sleeve. It was an MMO through and through. It had you know <clears throat> it had auto attack combat, you know, third person only view, um, big overly gigantic ridiculous um, you know architecture stuff like that. That's a, that's a, that's a thing I have with this game as well, like. The designs for the buildings and stuff like that, a lot of them look fairly familiar, although they're, they're ridic ridiculously huge. I mean, one of the places it was immediately noticeable was the Nord village at the start. Um, we had all these Nord buildings that looked vaguely like the ones you would get in Skyrim, except they were huge. Like, they were really big. They looked like they'd been built by giants. And you had all these little people running around in them and stuff like that. And it was really bizarre. Like, it was... 
It's what I, it's it's what I like to call what the bloody hell is that? Um, it's what I like to call MMO gigantism. It's a coin. I it's a, a coin a term I've seen coined elsewhere before, but it's a good one. And it just refers to the way that all the environments look really huge um, compared to the actual people. Like it's just disproportionately big and. Ultimately, I don't have too much of a problem with that. It makes the dungeons a bit weird, especially when you go into some of the Nordic barrows, which you're used to from Skyrim, and you go into it, and then it feels like... It feels like an, a Nordic barrow from Skyrim, except everything has been scaled up, um, except you're still the same size. It's very bizarre. It feels like you've been shrunk. I guess maybe people in the second era of Tamriel were, were just very small. <laughs> I don't know. But... Um, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that, generally speaking. Um, but the thing is, if you're going to do that, turn it up to 11. That's what that, that's what Guild Wars 2 did. They they turned it up to 11. You had like a, you know, have a freaking mead hall the size of a skyscraper, for current God's sake. That's what they did in Guild Wars. Uh, it was magnificent. They had this mead hall the size of a bloody skyscraper. You had this little city which looked like it had been nicked straight from Asgard. I, I went into the damn thing half expecting to see Odin sat there on a golden throne. You know massaging his beard and you know sat there with his eye patch and everything I, but, but yeah, this game like it just seems so uninspiring by comparison it really does like Guild Wars 2 in spite of being an MMO like I said like a classic MMO with all the MMO trappings it was just a lot better designed from a gameplay perspective and also it had a, amazingly enough it had a much better world to explore it really did um, like it, 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 and this is considering this is supposed to be an Elder Scrolls game where world design is supposed to be paramount to almost to everything else. Yeah, you know, I, I, I remember Guild Wars 2 having a much more interesting world to explore. You know, you actually had a point in exploring them because you could find events and that sort of thing where you could get XP and that sort of thing. You had little events and little side quests that were more than just kill X number of creatures. You know, run across. And, and the world was open as well. That was the main thing. Like, you had channeled in areas that transitioned from zone to zone, but you didn't get a loading screen. Um, you could wander from place to place, and the actual zones were huge. They were absolutely massive. I remember getting out of the main beginning area I was when I was playing with my first character in that game. And I got out into this open, sort of African savannah, desert-y type area, and it was massive. And I remember just sitting there and saying, you know, sod the quests, I'm just going to pick a direction and go in it until I find something I'm t that's too difficult for me to kill. And that's what it did, you know, we were wandering off, finding events to take part in, you know, big multiplayer um, PvE battles to do and stuff like that. And, you know, there was actually interesting interesting things to see and explore. And the game rewarded you for exploring as well. There were, you know, you would get experience for reaching certain landmarks, kind of almost Assassin's Creed style. You'd climb to the top of a rock or something and then you'd get this viewpoint thing, a little cinematic and that sort of thing. But in this game, there's just nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, it looks pretty impressive. Like, graphically, like I said, it's not a bad-looking game. It feels a little bit, in places, like an exceptionally pimped-out Morrowind. <laughs> but, um... You know. The world feels a lot more 2D. I look at all these mountains and stuff in the background here. And I know I can't climb those. I can't go up onto those. I can't go to the top of that waterfall. You know. I can't do any of that stuff. If this was Skyrim, or Morrowind, or whatever, I could look out there, see that mountain peak, and I would say to myself, I'm going to go stand on top of that, and admire the view from the top of it, and I would spend the next half hour trying to get to the top of it. That's what I did the first time I ever played Oblivion, in fact. I got out of that, that sewer... Saw one of the mountains in front of me and decided I'm going to climb one of those. And that's what I did for the first half an hour of playing the game. In this, no. Not at all. Can't do that as much as you'd like to. And there's nothing out there anyway. Just more of this. Random enemies that constantly respawn. Yeah. So much to do, my ass. <laughs> Never mind. I'm pretty much running out of stuff to say here, folks. I think I've said everything I need to. And yeah, those are my those are my impressions of the Elder Scrolls Online. They're not great. They're really not. 
It's fairly, it's fair to say. It has its highlights. You know, there are good things about this game. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, there are, there are a lot of things I like about the game. I like the, I like this hotbar system. I like this. Press a button and then I can do this crazy, you know, javelin spear thing. That's awesome, you know. Spells in, like, the later Elder Scrolls games, especially Skyrim, have been pretty bloody dull. I like having a button I can press and I conjure an ethereal spear and then stab everything to death with it. That's great. It's awesome. Conjuring down holy, you know, bolts of doom to smite people. Great stuff. Love it. You know. Uh, the dialogue's good, most of it. You know, the voice acting's, you know, pretty top-notch. I, I, I could be wrong, but I believe I actually encountered a, a character voiced by John Cleese at one point during the tutorial. I mean, my god, it was either John Cleese or someone doing a very good John Cleese impression. Um, which was a nice surprise, you know. That's good. The music as well, actually. I, that's something I've not touched on at all, actually, thus far. But the music in this game, very nice. You know, if I could buy the, the, the soundtrack, you know, separately and then just mod it into my other Elder Scrolls games, I think I'd do that. Because the music in this game is lovely. Um, including on the main menu, you get the, the, they, they even went to the trouble of doing a pretty, you know, a fairly rousing rendition of the Elder Scrolls theme. You know, that's pretty good. You know, and again, like I said, graphically the game is fairly good, you know, for an MMO. Um, I'm not disappointed. It presses all the right nostalgia buttons, you know. You know, in some ways, in some ways it doesn't. I mean, like, we're in Morrowind, look, we've got all these Mournhold sort of style buildings and stuff like that, but... I haven't seen any bone mold armor. No bone mold armor in Morrowind. You've got to be kidding, right? But, no. Apparently there isn't any. All I've found is iron armor. That's all I can afford to buy at the minute because of the way the economy in this game works. Ah, oh, well, goat meat, excellent. Just start hoarding the stuff. Shall be the goat meat baron of Valoria or wherever the heck we are. I don't even remember. Oh dear. I can jump on top of stuff. Isn't that lovely? Oops. That was a close one. <laughs> yeah, the jumping in this game is a little awkward as well. Like, I think I don't think you can... Yeah, you can't change direction once you've jumped and stuff like that. Which makes actually jumping around an obstacle a little bit difficult. And I did not, in fact, mean to jump off that balcony just then. But I ended up doing it because... Yeah, it's a little awkward. Um, very minor can play that, though, to be fair. Um, some mushrooms. Let's collect some shrooms. Why not? So yeah, I just, I tried to like this game, I really did. I went into it thinking, you know, let's do this. Let's do this, let's, let's try and enjoy this. Let's, you know, let's take the excuse to just go back and visit Morrowind again. You know, what a, what a brilliant place. You know, let's go back and visit Morrowind again, kill some dudes, run around, do some quests, laugh fun. I'll play a Dark Elf character in Morrowind once again, like I used to in the old days. And have some fun, but... All I've been really been is bored to death. It's kind of sad, really, I guess. So, you know, would I recommend this game? Well, you've already made your minds up by this point, I imagine. Uh, this, vi I mean, this video is going to be like Flame War Central, I can already tell. But, uh, you know, it's just the burden, burden of the critic these days, apparently. Um, flame Wars and nasty comments is just something you have to deal with. Um, so, you know, would I recommend it even to, well, especially to, you know, hardcore Elder Scrolls fans like myself? No. I'm afraid I wouldn't. Not even if you were just looking for that kind of co op Elder Scrolls experience, because that's not what you're going to find here. If you want, if you were thinking you wanted to play basically an Elder Scrolls game where you could run around and, you know, do it with a friend, then the, yeah, I don't think you're really going to find that here, because that's not what this game's about. That's what I was looking for, to be completely candid with you, viewers. That was that is what I was looking for when I came to this game. Um, but I'm not... I just... Yeah. It's not It's not what it's here to do, really. It's here to be an MMO, first and foremost. It's not an online Elder Scrolls game. It is an Elder Scrolls-themed MMO. And yes, there is a difference. So... No. Would not recommend. Sorry.
but hey, you know, like if you're into this sort of thing, if you if you've seen me playing this game now and you've actually liked what you've seen, by all means, go get it. You know, my my word is not law. I have no pretensions to that fact. I'm offering I'm offering my first impressions of this game from a very biased perspective. I mean, let's make that completely clear. This is a very biased perspective. I have a very specific viewpoint when it comes to video games, as you're undoubtedly aware if you've already been on my channel and that sort of thing. Um, all I can do is be honest with you and tell you what I actually think of the game. So, you know, yeah, no, I, I can't honestly recommend it based on what I've seen and based on my opinions. If you're looking for a kind of slightly, maybe more fresh Elder Scrolls experience, maybe you're like me, maybe you're a Morrowind nut who decided, you know, I want to go back and explore tomorrow in a bit. You know, there, there are other things you can do. There are, you know, there are other projects ongoing. There's, you know, Skywind obviously is on, on its way and is looking very impressive. You know, in spite of my misgivings with the project, like it looks damn impressive. Like go go see the videos of that if you haven't already. The development videos are amazing. Like, the work they, those guys are doing is f absolutely fantastic. Um, if you're a bit of an old, old old school fan, there is stuff like Tamriel Rebuilt, uh, which is an unbelievably good mod. That um, is for Morrowind. It adds, um, it adds like it, the begin. Well, they're beginning to add. They haven't completely added um, the section of mainland Morrowind to the original game Morrowind that seamlessly integrates into the original world on the original map. You can walk from Sadenine to. The new areas added by the mod completely. It's all really faithfully done, just as Bethesda would have designed it had they decided to do it. Um, it's really authentic. You 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 honestly forget you're playing a mod half the time. It feels like an actual a, an actual expansion. That's what it because that's what it is. Like it is of that size. It, it constitutes an expansion in the same vein as Blood Moon or Tribunal, in my opinion. You know, big open area, loads of interesting places to explore. It's not bland and featureless like this. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff like ruins, dungeons, ancient abandoned canyons, holy cities like Necrum, you know, little swamp villages. It's all it's all there. It's great. And it's got quests to do. It has quest lines. Some of them aren't finished yet. The mods are obviously a work in progress, but it's got quest lines to do. It's got, you know, guild quests, that sort of thing. It's got just random miscellaneous quests. And it almost doubles the area of the map in Morrowind. It really does. It's huge. It's massive. Um, I mean, if you're interested, you can go and have a look at my channel. You look up the, I think it was called Dave's Odyssey to the East, which are, I mean, unfortunately the vids are a bit low quality because it was part of a live stream, but um, it was a stream where I basically walked from Sadenine all the way to the holy city of Necrum as part of a pilgrimage my character was doing, and it was amazing fun. Um, it was like a three-hour stream of me just sort of making this pilgrimage on foot um, across this amazing landscape that the models have created and stuff and you know I mean if anyone's interested I can do some videos showcasing uh, Tamriel Revolt if people are interested I can absolutely do that because it's an amazing mod and deserves to be promoted a bit more and if you're looking for that kind of experience whereby you want to be able to go like yes I want to go just randomly explore bits of Tamriel that I've not seen before that's kind of that that is what I would point you in the direction of I would not point you in the direction of this because this doesn't it just doesn't feel authentic, I guess, is what I'm saying, really. Because it's not designed like an Elder Scrolls game with cool stuff for you to explore everywhere, it doesn't feel like an actual Elder Scrolls game. I mean, God, it doesn't even feel like it's canon, for Christ's sake. It's that it's that bad. It really does. Like, my, my brain is subconsciously kind of not treating this entire experience here as being canon. Like, in my head... This is not what this area of Morrowind looks like. It's completely different. It's not like this, though. Um, and that's not usually a good sign, is it? When a player sort of starts subconsciously treating the world you've created as not being actually part of the canon universe. Um, oh, dear. Well, anyway, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to sign off for now. Guys, I, I've said everything I need to say, you know. My analysis, I think, I hopefully has been fairly in-depth. I've gone on for a long time now. This is going to be an exceptionally long video. Um, and I hope you guys have found it informative and all that sort of thing. Um, for those of you who didn't manage to get access to the beta, hopefully this has given you an insight into what the game is actually like. Um, as I said, if you want something that heaps um, you know, in crazy amounts of praise on the game, then go elsewhere because you're not going to find that here. I'm going to be honest with you guys. 
but you God, look look at these all walking animations. He look like a he looks like a zombie. It's just weird. Um. So yeah. God, that's all I'm gonna say. Really, that is it. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That has been my first impressions of the Elder Scrolls Online, the beta. Anyway, I may return to it in future if they do future beta runs to see what they've changed and see if they've made any major differences. Uh, maybe once the final game is out itself and if I hear about there being some serious massive changes from the beta, I will come back to it maybe then and do another look at it, but that's that's it, basically. Uh, this game, it just feels like a big, empty, soulless cash cow. It's a Zenimax saying to themselves, how can we get people to pay us £10 a month? How can we get 20 million people to do that? This is their answer to that question. And um, it's a shame. It really is. I'm used to Elder Scrolls being... Being able to experience an Elder Scrolls game and see it as for what it is as a labour of love by some incredibly talented designers uh, who've made this fantastic, amazing world for you to just completely lose yourself in and explore and... Uh, this is just a pale shadow. It really is by comparison. Sorry to say it. I was hoping it wouldn't be like this. I was hoping it'd be better. I was hoping I could really like this game and really get into it. But uh, it doesn't look good. To me, anyway, personally. Anyway, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll, uh... I guess I'll see you folks next time. With a slightly better game than this, hopefully. It's enough for now.